Hello and welcome and we're back with some Shogun from the Summer Cup 2024 in round two. Um, here we have a battle played between Clayton uh, in the yellow banners and on my other side Trebor um, in the red banners. We are once again on crossroads um, with the following dojos. So in the center we do have a sword dojo on the right we do have a farmhouse and on the left there is an archery dojo. Um, it looks like uh, Trebor um, is the one uh, who is attacking, judging from his positioning. And he brings a bow general, a full bow general to the table. Um, then he has some fire calf, rank 6, some yari calf, light calf. So, um, a very uh, weak calf contingent, only three calves. Um, then we have some matchlocks, three of them. Each of them Ashigaru rank 5. Um, then we see Lone Sword Ashigaru, four of them rank 9 Banzai, um, which do get played a lot uh, this tournament. Um, almost every game there is a Lone Sword build. Um, in front of them, um, they're covered by some Yari Ash, some of them Vanilla, some rank 2. And on the flank, going for the Archery Dojo is a Yari Sam, rank 1. Mm, not sure if he has another one. If he has, we can't see it yet. Um, for Clayton, we have some Yari Calf, rank 6, Light Calf on the right. Same combination on the left. And a hidden light calf with an attendant also going for the archery dojo. Um, just as um, Tribor, he has three uh, matchlocks, but one of them is um, a warrior monk, extended range. And he has a Daikyu samurai, so interesting battle. Uh, so we have a mobile 200 range gen um, and a 200 range uh, foot archer unit. He also has four Lone Sword Ashigaru uh, with Yari Ash cover. So this is pretty much a, a Mura matchup when it comes to the core. Um, the difference being um, the investments um, uh, into the, the skirmish units. Um, but let's see if I have missed anything. I don't think there's any Waco Raiders on the battlefield yet. At least we can't see them. Um, so anyway. Um, this is a tricky map, um, so I can understand um, Clayton bringing bows here because the line of sight isn't ideal, um, unless you go completely over the center and then you get a better line of sight. Um, but we see some skirmishes here, a matchlock ash against matchlock ash, but Tribors are better uh, equipped with uh, some upgrades and they are nicely shooting over the heads of their own Ashigaru. Um, so these are some nice engagements for Tribor. Um, this extended range matchlock also has a decent decent line of sight, um, but it's not enough to shoot the Daikyu, who are pretty much firing unthreatened here. I think he's trying to target the uh, general of Tribor, um, who's moving around constantly, which he has to do in order to protect him. 22 kills and four men lost um, so far, um, which is not ideal. Um, I think he needs to get more out of him, but at least the matchlocks are performing better for Tribor um, as of this moment. Um, let's see if Clayton notices the charging fire calf. He does, counters it with his own Yari calf. Let's see, rank six versus rank six. Um, usually the fire calf should win that one. 21 attack, 10 defense. Yeah, the fire calf should 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 win it in theory, but I think it still had an attack order on the light calf, which means that Clayton uh, won this one handedly, handily. Um, so good exchange here by by Clayton. Um, let's see on the flanks. The battle for the archery dojo is being won by Trebor. I think Clayton may have missed this light calf charge because um, there's a lot left over from Tribor's light calf. Yari calf routing, Nagi attendance. This archery dojo will belong to Tribor now. 
and this is um, this can be a crucial dojo um, because there is a bow general on the field and in the late game if you have the chance to replenish ammunition um, this could be the death um, for t for Clayton if there's going to be a late game um, but you never want to want to give a give a bow general the option of, of uh, going to the archery dojo. Um, so what else is happening? So the Daikus are firing constantly, I think. 140 kills already. Um, and they're going for Lone Sword Ash. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> probably a good idea to switch targeting. It's, it's hard to catch the, the bow general uh, that is constantly moving. So instead he's just killing the swords. A good choice, I, th I feel. Here we have Lightcalf, probably having attempted to get into the matchlocks, being blocked by swords, uh, uh, sorry, by Yariash. And Clayton being aggressive around the farmhouse. Um, should make... Um, yeah, should kill off this uh, Firecalf uh, rather quickly. Um, let's see if anyone... No, neither one has the sword dojo and yeah it looks like Clayton is just going for um, some aggressive moves around the farmhouse um, where he saw an opening um, and there really isn't um, that much left to block here especially if this Yari calf runs through here I think well he runs it to the other side now I don't know about that but if he runs through here the same way that his general is going um, I think Clayton would have great success here so Lone Swords against Lone Swords, mm, depends on who got the better charges here. Um, single Yari Ash flanking, interesting to see, we could arrest this general. And here we just have a Mexican standoff of spear walls um, and the swords in the back, um, just waiting for their turn. Um, but the big question is, what is Trevor's general doing? Already down to 10 men. 120 kills is not terrible. Um, but um, it's getting... Like with 11 men, it's, it's, it's less and less a late game threat. Um, especially now being targeted again by, by Clayton's Dikeus. Um, here Clayton's countering some light calf in the back. Um, Good micro, I think. And now I think we just see the, the advantage of the Daikyu over a, over a bow general in a, in a static game like this. Um, and it is quite a static map, especially when you commit to the dojos here. And the Daikyu just has that much more firepower than, than, than a general. And it just keeps firing and firing. But here Trebor is doing well. Again, his matchlocks do have a good line of sight, um, and um, routing some some units on the left of, of Clayton. So let's slow down. Let's have a look at this. So Tribor still has a Yari calf ranked to full strength, going for the matchlock warrior monks. Um, big mistake by Clayton here, just leaving them isolated. They will most likely die if they're not getting saved by this Yari calf. So two full calves for each player, um, although Clayton's is a little stronger. Clayton still has his full general, full strength, with good melee stats because it's a mixed general. So um, this could be very useful in the end. Um, then infantry wise, I think here Tribor does have the advantage. Lone Sword against Lone Sword. Here he has a Again, I keep missing these hero units. I did the same in Bushido's, Bushido's match. Um, there's a Tetsubo Warrior Monk hero in the mix, which, unlike in the game of Bushido, um, is actually a good choice here um, because he doesn't have a, a, leader, a, a leadership general. So having a hero unit in the mix, um, I think, is really good. Um, so 22-man hero unit and a lone sword left. And... Here we have a full, almost full Lone Sword from Clayton. So I think infantry-wise, um, it's actually pretty even.
but yeah, the calf from Clayton just made uh, Tribor made it easy for him, I think, too easy for him to kill, kill off his last calf. I mean, he was going for the matchlock warrior monks, which was a good choice, um, but with the support of the Yari calf, um, would have been more appropriate to just charge in and get out again, because um, now he lost the last last really mobile instrument uh, in his army to do damage. And now there's really nothing left for Tribor to kill the remaining skirmish units. The Daikyu, the Matchlock Ash and the Matchlock Warrior Monk. And I think that's that's game. 200 kills on that Daikyu. That was the match winner here. I feel like, I mean, what could uh, Trebor have done differently? I think the the positioning um, from the match logs in the beginning was quite good. Um, but in the end, the trade-off wasn't there because um, him being in such close proximity to the main force of Clayton uh, meant that he was under constant assault from the Stai queue. And if you do have the, the bow general and you're playing against the leader leadership build, um, you want to be constantly moving, um, using the whole width and length of the map and um, just being a mobile threat and harassing your opponent. And when you have a standoff, like main force against main force, um, assaulting each other frontally, even if you have a good focused fire from your bow general, the odds are always in the favor of the leadership general, I think. So I think just with a slightly different approach, some more, some more, some more kiting um, and retreating from Tribor, um, I think it would have increased his chances in this game. Two hundred twenty-eight for the die queue. Some good stats for the long for the lone swords, um, but again, I think some of them um, were fighting against uh, the pleated lone swords from Tribor um, through the die queue. And else, there's nothing too surprising here, I think. Yeah, the fire calf, 32 kills. Mm, I think that was because of the a mismatch, the uh, attack order from Tribor. I think this fire calf should have, should have, in theory, won its fight against uh, Clayton's Yari calf. Um, but yeah, so this means that um, Clayton is up 1-0. And um, since this is a best of three, I'll see you in game two. Bye bye. And we're back in game two on Hida Mountains. Um, this time Clayton being the attacker. And both players appearing to go for the um, forest line in the center. Um, on the left we have a shrine, in the center an archery dojo, and on the right a farmhouse. Um, so shrine should probably be the priority for both players. Um, Clayton does bring a Naginata Warrior Monk core, four of them rank six, um, with some uh, paired with some sword attendants. Um, again, Yari calf, light calf combination on I think each flank. No, here it's the fire calf, and um, oh, he has he still has two Yari calf and a fire calf, so three heavy calf and two light calf for Clayton. Uh, good choice. I think Hida is a good map for cavalry. Um, and a Waco Raider rank 9 with Banzai um, going for the Shrine. Um, his general is still uh, a mix of leader and uh, melee. 
And for Clayton, um, we have some Yari Sam's Vanilla going for the farmhouse. We have Matchlock Ashigaru, one, two, three, all of them extended range. Some Yari Ash again, mostly rank two, I, f I think. Um, again, Lone Swords, just like in the last game, four of them, Banzai. And his general has switched from bow to leadership. Um, and now there's a Daikyu as well, 200 range. And given that he changed uh, to leadership general, I think there's also no hero unit this time. At least I'm not spotting any. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, so Trebor uh, doing the right thing, um, blocking uh, Clayton's capture of the shrine with his light calf. Um, let's have a look at the positioning. Line of sight should be decent for this Yari uh, Matchlock Ash. Here, uh, it would depend on the approach. And this one is decent as well. Um, so there is a bit of a down downward slope here um, from Trebor's perspective. And um, Clayton has a really good position um, around here where there's also um, a somewhat elevated terrain. Um, but Clayton doesn't have any skirmishes this, this game, so um, he shouldn't think too much about, about matchlock positioning and more about how he wants to approach this, um, this assault. Um, so both players um, appearing to want to compete for the farmhouse. Um, Clayton sending some sword attendants there. No, the sword tenants are going for the archery dojo. Um, but yeah, this light calf won't do much against the Yari Sams other than wasting its time. Um, yeah, it looks like um, Clayton will just want to to keep the distance, um, wait for some small developments around the dojos before doing anything, and uh, Trebor obviously will want to, to make use of the expensive uh, skirmishes that he that he bought. Some of them firing over the dojo into a bulletproof Sam. Interesting, one of the arrows was on fire. But yeah, they're not going to do much damage against nine level, uh, nine armor bulletproof Sams, which I forgot to mention, I think, but yeah. Um, this is a very strong flank. Bulletproof, rank 4, and Banzai Waco Raiders. Um, so it looks like Trebor got some shots off, but only three kills. Here we have a calf fight. Trebor losing some light calf. But killing half a Yari calf, that's almost... I mean, not almost, that is worth it. Um, I don't know how that happened, but uh, I think... I think this was a, was a good trade for, for Trebor. And yeah, um, Clayton still keeping a distance, not wanting to give Tribor any openings. And here we have a little cat and, cat and mouse game uh, between Clayton and Tribor. Um, I like I like this approach by, Clay by Clayton, just denying Tribor's Yari Sams. And in the end, when the main engagement starts, he can just get the light calf and support the main force. And he will be there much quicker than this Yari Sams, uh, than this Yari Samurai. So, having both these units isolated here, I think, uh, is a is a benefit to to Clayton. I mean, the sword attendants that he's sending here, they can do a couple of kills against Yari Sam, but then they will just die. So I don't know what the plan uh, here is. Okay, let's speed this up. Trebor trying to harass with his Daikyu. Um, 16 Nagi Warrior Monks killed, that's very good. Yeah, this is a problem for Clayton. He's just taking too much time. And there's no reason to wait, I think. I mean, he's not going to get the shrine. So there's no reason to wait for that. 
He's not going to get the farmhouse. There's no reason to wait for that. So he just has to go in, which I think he realizes now. This is... Um, well... Um, miscalculation by Clayton. And Tribor um, just turns around his matchlock ash. Um, um, laying a trap for Clayton's fire calf. Um, rank 6, very expensive. Yeah, this, this one is going to be wasted, I fear. Um, but um, yeah, Clayton is just trying to bring chaos into this um, very tightly congested um, army composition. And sometimes bringing chaos uh, will require some sacrifices. I just don't feel that this sacrifice um, is, is worth taking. Um, here we have some fire calf against the calf. Clayton should win this one handily. And here we have the first engagement, swords against swords. Wakos should kill these lone swords. But again, very nice um, positioning here from the matchlocks, um, getting some shots at the fire calf that is retreating. Yarisam's getting back charged by sword attendants. But even then, I mean, it's not ideal for, for Tribor, but they will still k just kill these sword attendants. Nagi attendants blocking Yarikav again. Um, yeah, good cover overall so far. Um, Tribor didn't really let Clayton um, create any gaps uh, to go through to uh, uh, and into the vulnerable units. So this IQ is has been well protected so far. These matchlocks have been well protected so far. And um, Clayton going for the frontal assault, um, um, hoping to break this th threateningly looking um, but uh, inexpensive and low morale spear wall in the front. The question just being, will he have enough to then also um, kill these lone swords? We see some targeted fire from Tribor's Daikus against the leadership general of, of uh, Clayton. And now these Nagi attendants need to protect the Daikyu from the back chargers of, this, of these two calf units, but the Daikyus will get hit. And in the back, um, Tribor just uh, keeps buying his main force time by, by throwing Nagi attendants into um, into much stronger units from Clayton. Um, um, but of course, they will they will eventually die. And now there's an opening for Clayton to go into the standard fight general of Tribor, um, who is now reacting by sending a lone sword, which is this is weird. His own lone sword is completely blocked by the horses of the general and the matchlock ash. So I think they have like zero charge bonus now. Um, but they, they will they will fight and protect um, uh, uh, the general from the from the bulletproof sams. And now it's uh, pretty messy, so it's hard to say what's going on. Um, Clayton popped war, war cry on some of his monks, so this lone sword would have to use Banzai um, about now, because there's also a Nagi warrior monk in the back. Here we have a Yari Ash and a lone sword um, who basically won their fight and who now can be reutilized by turning around. This spear wall needs to turn around and move into these Nagi warrior monks. And here these lone swords can go forward and kill off these um, uh, warrior monks. Um, I think so far Tribor is managing, um, is managing this fight in the forests um, quite well. Um, and Clayton, I, th I feel, is running out of the numbers to, to um, make a dent into Tribor's setup. These bulletproofs, they will hold for very long, but they will not kill off all the units here, including the Long Yariash and um, 
the uh, uh, the lone sword. The matchlock in here, I don't think is is firing, but maybe he could um, surprise Clayton um, by moving out of this blob and focus firing the general. Um, here, um, Trebor is just running for it, um, retreating the matchlocks from the Waco Raiders, level 9. Good choice. And since he's now on this elevated terrain that I mentioned earlier, he could get some nice shots off. Did he actually get the... He's in the process of getting the farmhouse, so eventually he could, he could keep running. But now this is very well done. Um, he turns around and instead of firing at the uh, chasing Waco Raiders, he uh, gets a full volley at Clayton General, which is also chasing. And this general is no longer a threat, basically, um, with six, seven men. Here we have the light calf, um, which was at the farmhouse in the beginning. Coming to join the fight rather late, I, I have to say. Um, this is not ideal. Um, and I don't think um, they can do much damage here anymore, because aside from all the lone swords, there's a lot of spears left for Trevor. Yariash, Yariash, Long Yariash. Yeah, I think this is over. Um, I think the problem with uh, with the approach from uh, from Tribo, uh, so, so from Clayton um, uh, was just the different timings. So on the one hand, he uh, waited for too long to start the main engagement. Then he started the main engagement with expensive calf instead of with the sword attendants that he brought. And um, yeah, I think. Also, the general um, not being in stand and fight was a problem here. Tribor's long Yariash performing well. The Yair Sams, they killed mostly attendants, but um, uh, kept uh, Clayton's, Clayton's units on the flank busy. And yeah, Waco Raiders bulletproof, doing well for Clayton. Very, very reliable units. Um, if you have them available, you should always bring them, basically. But yeah, um, this means that I think both players lost their map pick, uh, making it uh, making the score one one. Um, so there will be a tiebreak uh, tiebreak battle on the tiebreak map, Hapo Ridge. So I'll make a I'll do a quick break and uh, I'll see you then. Bye bye. And here we are, back on game three, um, the decider between uh, Clayton and uh, Trebor. Um, once again, um, I see a lot of Ashigaru for both of them, so um, no change here. Um, but yeah, on Habo Ridge we have um, three dojos, sword dojo on the left, uh, workshop in the center, and an archery dojo on the right. And for Clayton, I think um, we're back to four calf. Too, too light, too heavy. Um, Daikyu, just like in game one. And uh, two matchlocks, one of them being a uh, warrior monk. And yeah. Same same old, same old. Yariash, um, Lone Sword Ash, Banzai. And for Clayton, um, we have um, still a leadership general as in game two. And one, two, three matchlock ash. Um, same old, same old. Yari ash, lone sword ash. And also a bow, uh, 200 range daikyu. With 55, 75. So they even have identical stats. Um, although Tribors does have more ammo than Clayton's. But it's also a higher level. And um, on the flanks, going for the Sword Dojo, we have uh, Yarisam, two Yarisams for uh, Tribor and Lightcalf Nagi attendants for Clayton. So um, Tribor laying a stronger claim on the Sword Dojo with uh, um, with stronger units. Calf-wise, he has 
um, two heavy calf and uh, one light calf. Um, so I would say, um, yeah, slight calf advantage to Clayton, but otherwise this is pretty even. Um, three matchlocks against two, but um, Clayton having having the warrior monk, which is a good, really good choice here on this map, I think. Um, because there's a few areas that you just want to want to command and um, lay your claim on, uh, with, which you can do really well with uh, the extended range uh, matchlock warrior monk. Um, so Clayton popped the extended range, um, getting some good volleys into Tribor's matchlock ash. And these matchlock warrior monks are not harmed by Tribor's DiQ because the DiQs are dueling each other um, and before they're focusing each other's matchlocks. So Tribor just going closer, trying to trade trade volleys with this matchlock warrior monk. Um, and although the, he does have a good forest position here, um, with 30 accuracy, he's not going to do much here. He can 70 accuracy matchlock warrior monks. Clayton sending a lone sword to the flank, seeing that these two Yari Sams are unattended um, and very vulnerable to swords, uh, which means that Tribor will have to react as well, which he's doing now. Um, sending a light calf here, which can be really threatening to to lone sword ash. Um, here we have Clayton trying to get into matchlock Ashigaru. Um, nice reaction by Tribor, um, forcing the retreat. And even this um, matchlock Ash can start firing now. Um, it should be rather easy to fire through this workshop in the center. Um, which I think both both these units from Clayton and Tribor did. But he's repositioning them now. I think he really wants to focus and kill off this matchlock warrior monk. So this <laughs> matchlock Ash is taking the same position as the one that just died here. And Clayton can do a really nice 2 versus 1 here. Even taking his time to, to retreat the matchlock warrior monks a little bit to get them uh, to get them more cover. And letting this uh, matchlock Ash take, uh, take the hit. Um, Bowwise, 70 men left, 60 kills. Um, 58, 26 kills. So Clayton's DiQ is doing much better than Tribor's DiQ. I don't know why that is. Um, um, maybe the Dodro? Yeah. So Clayton does have the Archery Dodro. Which means that they have uh, 80 reload versus 55 reload. So this is a pretty big advantage. Um, here we have... Um, I think, yeah, Lone Sword by Clayton got routed, um, and I think he missed the Banzai on them. Um, at least I noticed that while I watched the live stream, because Clayton live streamed his matches, I think he missed this Banzai, um, so that should have pulled out for, for much longer. Um, now we see Yarikav against Yarikav, Clayton turning around, he should win this one level 6 against level 2. Um, but Clayton has a problem here that without the Lone Swords, his two attendants are just going to melt away. So he's getting the light calf out of here, knowing that this is lost. Um, but still, he should not, not give uh, give up this flank completely, because you don't want to give the sword dojo to your opponent. So I think Clayton does the right thing here, um, sending a new force to strengthen his left. Um, and now um, we see Tribor having to react, because even though he won the initial fight, he doesn't have uh, left um, enough troops to, to kill off another Lone Sword level 9. And here these Meshlock Warrior Monks just keep firing and firing. 180 kills, still almost full strength. They're absolutely lethal here. Also 60 reload with the Archery Dodro. I think this was a really good move by, Tri by Clayton going for it in the beginning. And these Daikus by Trevor are just getting massacred. I think he even changed. Yeah, he even stopped uh, trying to kill Trevor's Daikyu, um, knowing that he has no chance. So he he targeted other units instead, um, going for the Matchlock Ashigaru. 
here we have some nice charging from Clayton into the Lone Swords of Trevor and following it up uh, by the Lone Swords of his own. We have Lone Swords fighting downhill against Yari Sams, and here we have Yari Sams against Yari Ash. We are not in Spear Wall, so two out of these three fights um, should go in favor of Clayton. And here, Tribor is just running out of men. Like he, had, he doesn't really have an answer to to, to this one to, to this one match lock and the die queue from from Clayton. This is going to be brutal as well. Yeah, really nice charge by the light calf. Yeah, this is the the problem when you when you don't have uh, when you don't have a strong calf force, uh, and your opponent uh, also gets the upper hand by by getting the archery dojo in the skirmish fight. Then what do you really have left in order to to get the battle in your favor? Um, I mean, an option for Treba would have been to just uh, retreat from the workshop in the center and reorganize around this left ridge line and then go for the melee push. But he can't really go for the melee push the way he does it now um, by going up here because then he even has, like aside from being out skirmished, he even has like the uphill battle in, in the melee fight. Um, which is hard to, hard, to, hard to win. But Clayton is playing this really cleanly as well. Like he knows he doesn't have to rush anything He's absolutely destroying, destroying uh, Tribor with his match locks, and everything else is just basically supportive of 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 this match lock warrior monk, which is the match winner. So really, really well played. I like this this um, this battle around the sword dojo. Both players realizing this is essential, and in the end, nobody got it. <laughs> Um, because by the time Clayton won this fight around here, the battle was uh, already over, so no no reason to go for the Sword Dojo anymore. Um, this is just cosmetics now. And yeah, the, the calf as well for Clayton, just feasting on some Lone Swords who are in the last last stand, trying to get re revenge on the matchlocks. Maybe maybe they get to 300 kills before the end. Yes, nice. So yeah, we see um, three battles with um, very similar approaches. Um, aside from game two from Clayton, um, we saw Ashigaru cores, I think every time, um, which seemed to be the new meta or have been the new meta for a couple of years now. Um, but yeah, the, I think still some nice moves and some interesting battles. Um, yeah, is there anything to point out here aside from the, ob the obvious MVPs? I don't think so. Um, Long Yari, 24 kills. I think that's the only unit where you can say they definitely underperformed. Otherwise, I think this was just um, a better thought out strategy, um, positioning wise, from, from Clayton, knowing he has the archery dojo and the range advantage from the matchlock, and then basing all other moves um, um, off of that fact. Um, I think that's what gave him the edge and really well played in the end, um, very decisive win. And this means that uh, Clayton moves uh, moves forward to round three and um, Trebor um, goes down into the lower bracket where I think he will play in round one against uh, Bushido. So um, yeah, I think that's it. and. Uh, 
Um, I'll do some, I cast some more games from round two this weekend, and um, I'll see you then. Bye bye.